Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe to find out how deep the rabbit hole goes. Maybe. Today we're building Morpheus, but which Morpheus? The one on the Nebuchadnezzar or the one inside the Matrix? I'm choosing the one inside the Matrix because it's a fictional world that's analogous to the real world, but you can have much more power inside that world. Basically, it's Dungeons and Dragons. No, it's easy to be a clever smart boy like me if you could do it all digitally. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, you have an unreasonable amount of knowledge of your world, like kind of fourth wall breaking. Next, we need Kung Fu, but our fighting won't just be based on how big our muscles are. Finally, weapons, guns, katanas, anything we can get our DM to bootleg into our game, we need to be able to use to take down agents. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your dexterity and wisdom high. Wisdom will be number one, you can do what you do because you understand yourself and that you can do whatever you want to do. Dexterity next, you know Kung Fu because you downloaded it, but you're still fast? Charisma after that, if you're going to convince people that their world doesn't actually exist, you need to be convincing. Follow that up with intelligence, you're the one who dumps lore, so you need to know the lore. Constitution is lower than I'd like. You are pretty good at dealing with the things the agents are throwing at you, but not everything can be high and we have to dump strength just because we need everything else more. Maybe the Matrix isn't Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe it's anime. Neo definitely has some anime protagonist energy. Morpheus is human. Variant humans get a feat. Inspiring leader lets you give up to six creatures. Temporary HP equal to your charisma modifier and your total level after a rousing 10 minute speech. Technically, you give the big speech in Zion, but you can bring your soft stats to the Matrix avatar because because I just decided you can. I'm kind of making up these rules as I go, just like the Wachowskis did when they wrote the movies. Bump your wisdom and charisma with your two free points, take perception for your skill of choice, and the acolyte background for religion and insight proficiency. You're basically a priest, and if you don't see the serious religious overtones in the Matrix movies, I don't know what to tell you. Stories have always been allegorical and political since they've existed. Speaking of devoted religious figures, monks in D&D aren't that, but they are good at punching stuff. You can grab two skills from the monk list, Athletics and acrobatics are great skills. Athletics will fix up your low strength score, and acrobatics will help you do sick flips and stuff. I don't know what the strategic value is of doing sick flips, but you can do them. Monks get unarmored defense, putting your wisdom to work early, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. This will let you take care of business in a business suit, preferably with a green tie. I understand why the machines put everyone into the late 90s New York, but why did they also drastically increase the color green's popularity? Also, why did they put everyone into late 90s New York? Were they just really into Seinfeld? Seinfeld can't use martial arts? But you can. It lets you make an unarmed attack as a bonus action, and they deal 1d4 using your dexterity if you want to, which you do, your strength is bad. You can also use monk weapons, which are simple melee weapons, or short swords that you can use your martial arts die for, and they get bumped up with that die when that die gets bumped up as well. Just download some new weapon proficiencies as you need them, you'll be fine. Second level monks get key points you can use to do matrix stuff, like Step of the Wind, which lets you dash or disengage as a bonus action and doubles your jump distance so you can hop from building to building. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action, giving your enemies disadvantage on attack rolls against you and giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws. I feel like the agents aren't even really attacking, they're just sending storms of attacks. A dexterity save might be applicable. Flurry of Blows lets you attack twice with your bonus action instead of once because sometimes you just really need to hit stuff, you know? You also get unarmored movement, which makes you faster when you're not wearing armor, which is probably why you don't wear any. That and a set of plate mail wouldn't exactly be incognito in a modern city. Third level monks can choose what kind of fighting style they want to download, and Kensei monks get Kensei weapons, which can be any weapon that doesn't have the heavy or special property. I'd recommend a long sword and a hand crossbow for a katana and a pistol equivalency. These become monk weapons, so their damage dice scales with you, and you can do special things with them like agile parry, which lets you add two to your AC if you're holding a melee Kensei weapon and make an unarmed attack as part of your action. Kensei Shot works with your ranged weapon attacks, letting you add a D4 to the damage of all of your ranged attacks for a round as a bonus action, which will get better once we get extra attack. Uh, spoilers, we're getting extra attack. You can also deflect missiles, letting you reduce damage from ranged attacks by 1D10 plus your monk level and dexterity modifier as a reaction and yeet them back with a key point if you want. Honestly, that's kind of more of a Neo thing. I just reduce the damage if you can and save your key points for other stuff. Fourth level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. So even if you don't make the jump, you'll be safe. You also get an ability score improvement. Let's get our dexterity on par with our wisdom for faster punches and better AC. Morpheus's best fighting skill is probably his blocking. 
fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action, and you can still flurry of blows for four attacks if you want to impress your crew with your fighting speed. You also get Stunning Strike, letting you force a constitution saving throw on creatures you hit with a melee attack of eight plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier. Failing that, they're stunned until the end of your next turn, so all of your melee attacks will get advantage. Maybe you punch people and also whisper, hey, you think that's area you're breathing? Your monk die also bumps up to a d6 as well for better punches. Bouncing over to Cleric real quick, again, there's a lot of religious themes in the Matrix, and you've definitely got a lot of faith in Neo, but I'm gonna say your deity would be the Oracle, the D&D equivalent of which would be Sovereign. That's right, it's knowledge cleric time, letting you learn two skills and giving you expertise with those skills as well. I'm gonna nab Arcana and History for all the lore dumping you're gonna have to do with every new crew member. Knowledge clerics can also learn special spells I'm interested in Identify, which lets you know what a magical item is and what it does as you patch into your buddy who's running the game. Knowledge clerics basically have the DM as their god, and their god likes them because what DM doesn't eagerly await doling out the lore? Detect magic lets you sense magical auras and what kind of magic is causing them so you can sniff out glitches in the matrix. Detect evil and good lets you know if there are aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiend, or undead within 30 feet of you for 10 minutes. I call agents aberrations probably, but that's up to your DM. Bless gives up to three creatures, a d4 to add to attack rolls, and saving throws for a minute depending on your concentration. Pretty much everyone in your crew is ridiculously cool. Obviously, you're giving them some sort of bump. For cantrips, guidance and resistance give one ally an extra d4 for ability checks or saving throws respectively, and spare the dying stop someone from rolling death saves, automatically saving them. I'm sure you can download some CPR training if you need to. Speaking of downloads, second level clerics can channel divinity, and knowledge clerics get knowledge of the ages, letting you download a skill or tool proficiency efficiency for 10 minutes once per long rest. All clerics can turn undead, forcing a wisdom saving throw on undead creatures and forcing them to run away if they fail. There aren't zombies in the matrix, but if there were, you would be able to do this. Definitely. Third level clerics can learn second level spells. Augury lets you know how something is going to go in the next half hour, getting a wheel, woe, both, or neither from your DM. Wheel means happy day, mission's going to go well. Woe means it's going to go bad. Both means both, neither means neither. Those last two are common words that you should probably know, but Morpheus has the power of prophecy, even if prophecy is kind of bogus sometimes. Fourth level clerics get an ability score improvement. Let's invest in that dexterity more. Wisdom is the cleric stat, but hey, look at that. None of your spells actually use the modifier. You actually get more out of your wisdom modifier from your monk levels than you do from your cleric levels, especially because we're, we're, we're done with cleric levels now. Sixth level monks get key empowered strikes, making your attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances, specifically your unarmed strikes. Though, since you're a Kensei monk, you also get magical Kensei weapons for, well, magical Kensei weapons. Say what you will about Kensei monks, they are not difficult to understand. You also get deft strike, letting you spend a key point to add an extra monk die to the damage of one attack per round. Again, not hard to understand. Your DM is going to have some maddening lore that's your job to explain to the other players. Let that be your complication. Seventh level monks get stillness of mind, letting you remove an effect of charming or frightening on yourself as an action. Morpheus is generally a pretty calm guy. Evasion lets you take half damage from failed deck saves or no damage on successful ones, which pairs really well with patient defense. If something's gonna go boom, you can keep yourself alive. Even more so when you cap off your dexterity modifier with the 8th level of monk because you get an ability score improvement that lets you cap off your dexterity modifier at the 8th level of monk. Oh no, I just got deja vu. There's a glitch here. Ninth level monks get even more matrix movement from unarmored movement improvement, letting you go up walls and over water without falling as long as you land somewhere solid. Technically, the water doesn't even exist. Why would you sink into it? Tenth level monks get purity of body, making you immune to poison and disease. Obviously, you're just patching out any bugs. Also, go wash your hands. Pause the video, wash your hands. Eleventh level Kensei monks can sharpen the blade, letting you spend up to three key points to add one to the attack and damage rolls of a Kensei weapon for a minute with plus one from each key point spent. Unfortunately, you can only have this on one weapon at a time, so you'll have to pick between a gun or a sword. Regardless, your monk die increases to a D8, so all of your weapons will deal a minimum of a D8. 12 level monks get an ability score improvement. I'm gonna recommend more wisdom. The monk class pretty much just says, hi, dexterity and wisdom are your stats. Don't look at the other ones, okay? Honestly, it kind of feels like conforming to a system, which isn't very Morpheus, but really high insight and dodging ability is, so I'm torn. 13th level monks get Tongue of the Sun and Moon, letting you understand any creature that speaks at least one language and they can understand you as well. I always thought it was weird that the Merovingian, essentially one of the gods of the Matrix, flexes about knowing a bunch of languages. Like you can just download Jiu Jitsu. Is cursing in French really that impressive? 
14th level monks get diamond soul, giving you proficiency with all saving throws. This is like the anime power, and the monk class personally apologizing to you for forcing you to only improve two skills. 15th level monks get timeless body, letting you ignore the effects of aging because the matrix version of you is your internal self image. So technically, you could look like Cowboy Curtis from Pee Wee's Playhouse if you wanted to. Just a thought. Our capstone is the 16th level of Monk for one last ability score improvement, and hey, you know what? We're gonna rebel against the system and invest in charisma for better inspiring leader speeches. That's really only one temporary hit point. You'd get plus one to your AC and saving throws from the wisdom. Ah, the system wins. Invest in wisdom. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, knowledge. You're the lore master extraordinaire, so you'll be the DM's best friend. You're also very hard to hit with 20 AC, and you can be even harder to hit with agile parry and patient defense. Finally, all of your attacks are magical, so nothing's gonna resist you, agent or not. For weaknesses, we're one level away from bumping our monk damage die again. Maybe drop level 4 of cleric to hit a little harder, but be a little less defensive. Inspiring leader also isn't the best feat for a monk because monks demand so much investment in non-charisma things. Something like defensive duelist or crossbow expert would pair much better with your levels. Finally, low strength can be an issue if you don't want to get thrown around. But they have to catch or hit you first, and you make that very difficult. Run around and free the minds of the world. Just make sure that the people are ready to wake up. For some, Illusion is a cipher sore eyes? That was a stretch, I'm sorry. Thanks for watching, if you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week, even though we've actually got three videos per week for the next couple of weeks. So come back on Saturdays too.